In this tutorial, we'll be looking at the fader and executor buttons. We will learn more about their functions and how we can modify them. Thank you for your interest in the Infinity Chimp Light controller and welcome to this tutorial. To learn more about the various parts of the Infinity Chimp Light controller, keyboard, and screen, you are advised to watch tutorial 1 and 2, Hardware and Software. This tutorial is based on software version 1.3. If your chimp uses a different software version, the functions or user interface may be different. Please note that we refer to the chimp hardware keys as keys and the GUI software keys as buttons in this tutorial. Configuring the playback keys. The chimp features 30 fader and 10 executor buttons. The soft keys on the touchscreen correspond to the real keys that we find on the Chimp keyboard. We can configure the keys and assign different functions to them. We do this by pressing the Edit key, followed by tapping a soft key on the touchscreen or pressing the physical key on the keyboard. In our example, we tap the soft key 7 on the touchscreen. In this pop-up window, we can assign different functions to the buttons. The order of the settings in the pop-up window corresponds to the order of the keys on the keyboard. This allows us to assign the functions of the Go button to the physical Go key on the keyboard. This also applies to the pause key, the fader, and the flash key. As soon as we tap the Go button in the pop-up menu, we see the options that we can assign in a drop-down menu. This also applies to the pause button. Here, too, the drop-down menu lists all the options. In respect of the options, the same functions can be selected for the Go button and the Pause button, as well as for the Flash button, which we will discuss later on in this tutorial. The drop-down menu on the fader also lists the available settings. These are different settings options than those offered on the Go or Pause button. As previously stated, the drop-down menu on the Flash button features the same functions as the Go and Pause buttons. If the Flash function has been assigned, then we can change its level to the right of the setting. As soon as the Flash key is pressed, the intensity of the Flash will correspond to the percentage that we set under the Flash level. We can press the Go key on Fader button 7 to activate the dimmer, and then the Flash key. The Flash function will run a Flash at 100%. If we change this Flash value to 25% and then run another Flash, then we will see that a Flash is run at 25%. Next to the fader settings in the pop-up menu, we find the fader options. The fader is set to the auto start function by default. This function ensures that the cue is activated automatically as soon as we slide the fader upwards. In our example, we deactivate dimmer 7 by pressing the off key followed by the playback key 7. Now, we can slide Fader 7 up and see that the queue is activated. As stated, this happens automatically because Auto Start has been enabled.
Now we deactivate the auto start function and switch dimmer 7 off again. As soon as we slide fader 7 up, we will see that the cue has not been triggered. We now need to trigger the cue manually by pressing go key 7. Only now will fader 7 work again as soon as we operate it. The auto stop function serves to disable the cue as soon as the fader has been completely slid down. If we activate the auto stop function in the pop-up menu and slide fader 7 down, then we will see that playback 7 is switched off. Fetch mode is a function that we can use when we create multiple fader and executor pages. In our example, we have activated fetch mode and set fader 7 to 50%. Then we switch pages by pressing the fader page up key and sliding fader 7 to 100%. We already have a queue here in which fetch mode has also been activated. We can go back to our previous page by pressing the fader page down key and moving the fader between 100% and 51%. The value will not change until we have reached the setting of this fader, which in the case of fader 7 is 50%. Only then does the fader show the value we have set. At the bottom of the pop-up menu, on the playback slash fader keys, we can see some other buttons. On the left, there are arrow buttons. We can use these buttons to change the playback slash fader page more quickly. At the top of the pop-up menu, we can see which key we are currently setting. The Save Default button is used to save our settings. In our example, we leave the Auto Stop and Fetch Mode disabled and save them by tapping on the Save Default button. The Load Default button serves to load the settings saved using the Save Default option again. To demonstrate this, we change Edit Pages by tapping the arrow buttons. Now we change some settings. By tapping the Load Default button, we can quickly retrieve the values we had previously saved using the Save Default function. The final function in the pop-up window that we will be dealing with is the Edit Queue List. Tapping Edit Queue List takes us straight to the queue list so we can make any changes to it. To complete our demonstration, Let's return to the pop-up window corresponding to the playback keys. The last function is close. We tap the close button to return to the main chimp touchscreen. Configuring the executor buttons. We can set the executors in the same way as we set the functions of the playback keys and faders. We can alter the features of the executors by pressing the Edit key followed by the corresponding Executor key. In our example, we press the Edit key followed by the Executor 1 key. Another pop-up window appears. At the top of this window, we can see Edit Executor 2.1. This means that we can change the features of Executor 1 on Executor Page 2. Toggle on slash off means we can activate the executor by pressing it and deactivate it by pressing it again. Go and off means that as soon as the executor key is pressed, it is activated and as soon as it is released, the queue is disabled again. Assert means that when a queue is active, it is reset to the first queue in the queue list. We use the Go function when we want to activate a queue list or start the next queue in the queue list. 
when it is set to manual trigger. The skip plus function is used if we want to run through the queues of queue list without taking account of the timing. We use the off function to deactivate a queue or queue list while retaining the release time. We can use the pause slash back function to pause a queue list and go back to the queues. We use the skip minus function to go back through the queues in a queue list without taking account of the timing. We use the instant off function to deactivate a queue or queue list at once without retaining the release time. At the bottom of the edit page, we see the same arrow keys and load and save default buttons as on the fader pages. These have the same features. The chimp also has buttons on the touchscreen that act as executors, which we call the virtual executors. We can change the features of these as well. We do this by pressing the edit key followed by a virtual executor button on the touchscreen. Examples of fader features. We have created an example in which we will change the features of the faders. In QList 40, we set up an effect with a tilt wave. We can see that both fader 8 and fader 9 contain the same QList. In our case, this is QList 40. The faders are set to dimmer by default. By pressing the Edit key, followed by the Playback key 8, we are taken to the Options menu, where we can change the features of Fader 8. We change the fader from Dimmer to Effect Size and activate the Auto Stop function. By tapping on the right arrow at the bottom of the Options window, we can move one fader to the right to reach fader 9. We change the fader from dimmer to effect speed and activate the auto stop function. Then we tap close to exit the options menu. On fader 8, we now have control of the size of the effect and on fader 9, we have control of the speed of the effect. In our next example, we have created a queue list on Fader 10 and included a number of color steps. To access the Fader 10 option menu, we press the Edit key followed by tapping the playback slash Fader 10 on the touchscreen. We change the fader from Dimmer to X Fade and tap the Close button to return to the main screen. In the split widget, in the bottom left corner, we can select Queue List View, which lets us see the queues that are programmed in the queue list. By operating Fader 10, we can fade from one queue to another. The next queue will only be activated when the fader is moved 100% up or 100% down. Until that point is reached, we can always fade back to the previous queue. In the queue list view, we can see that the queue is purple. This means we can still fade back. Only when the queue turns green will it be faded to the next one. This allows us to create smooth fades between the programmed queues. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Infinity strives to keep its chimp-related tutorials and software information up to date. Keep an eye on our social media channels for the latest information on the chimp.